In this problem, we're going to go a little bit further into the hypothesis test. We're going to be using the test statistic given to us. And we're going to see if we should reject the null hypothesis or if we should fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now, this problem says the test statistic of z equal to negative 2.22 is obtained when testing the claim that p is less than 0 0.78. Using a significance level of alpha equal to 0 0.10, find the critical values. So in this particular problem, it's leading us to use the critical value method to make a decision about the null hypothesis. So first, let's go ahead and write out the original claim. And then we can figure out what the null and alternative hypothesis, uh, uh, hypothesis is. And we get to determine what kind of test this is, left tail, two tail, to right tail. So our original claim, I forgot it, p is less than 0 0.78. So we have p is less than 0 0.78. This is our original claim. What would be true if the original claim was false? Well, then p would be greater than or equal to 0 0.78. Now let's identify the null and alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis always includes equals. This would be p is equal to 0 0.78. The alternative hypothesis, take a look at steps one and two. It's the one that does not include the equal to symbol. So this would be p is less than 0 0.78. So now we figured out what the alternative hypothesis is. That indicates this is a left tail test. Okay. So determining what type of test it is depends on what the alternative hypothesis is. Mainly it depends on what this symbol is that we have. Since it's a less than symbol, it's a left tail test. If it was the not equal to symbol, that means it's a two tail test. If it was a greater than symbol, it would be a right tail test. So here we have a left tail test. And then we have a significance level that was given to us in the problem. Let's go back and see what it is. It says using it, so part A says using a significance level of alpha equal to 0 0.10, find the critical value or values. Now, since this is a left tail test, we're only going to have one critical value. If it was a right tail test, same thing. You only have one critical value. But if it's a two tail test, that means you're going to have two critical values. But this one, left tailed, we only have one critical value. Now, since it's telling us that the significance level is 0 0.10, and this is a left tail test, that means we have an area here of 0 0.10. What we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what this critical Z score is. This would be our critical value. So now let's go ahead, go to StackCrunch, and we'll figure out what that critical value is. And I'll show you a couple ways that we could actually figure it out. So let's go ahead, open up StackCrunch. There's actually only one way that we could figure out the critical value here, because we don't have given like a summary of the sample. So that's my mistake. We could only use one way to find the critical value. So to find the critical value, what we have here is a z-score. And notice we're dealing with the population proportion. What we're going to do is go to calculators. We're going to go stat, calculators, and we go to normal. We have a mean of zero, standard deviation of one. And now in this right-hand box, we're going to put in the area that was given to us, which is 0 0.10. That was the significance level. And that was the area to the left. So we have to make sure our less than or equal to symbols there. Click on compute. That tells us what our critical value is. We have a critical value of negative 1.28. Negative 1.28. Okay. Now what we do is we make a decision if we reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So now in order to make that decision, we have to take a look at the test statistic given to us, negative 2.22. And we have to see if it's in the rejection region or not. So let's go back to that whiteboard. So we had a Z, uh, critical value of negative 1.28. And we were given a test uh, statistic, our test statistic 
with z equal to negative 2.22, we have to see if this test statistic is in the critical region, the rejection zone. Well, since negative 2.22, it's to the left of this critical value, negative 2.22 would be about, I don't know, let's say like about right here. This is in the critical region. This is in the rejection zone, which tells us that we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Our answer could be either A or D. And now we also have to take a look at what their original claim was in the beginning. Their original claim was P is less than 0.78. So the original claim did not include equality. So since their original claim did not include equality and we rejected the null hypothesis, that means that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. So our answer would be D right over here. So when you're working these out, after you determine if you're gonna reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject it, you have to take a look at the original claim and see if the original claim included equality or not. And then that will help you write out your final conclusion, which is either there is sufficient evidence to support the claim or there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. And that criteria is given in the PowerPoint on one of the very last slides, right over here. So the wording, wording the final conclusion. So the original claim does not include equality and you reject the null hypothesis, which is what we just had in our particular problem. That means that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that, and then you would write out what the original claim is. If the original claim does not include equality and you fail to reject it, you fail to reject the null hypothesis, that means that there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that, and then you write out what the original claim is. If your original claim includes equality and you reject the null hypothesis, there is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that, and then you go ahead and write out what the original claim is. Then lastly, if the original claim includes equality and you fail to reject the null hypothesis, that means that there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that, and then you write out what the original claim is. Okay, so there's two methods that we're gonna take a look at that helps us determine if we reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject it. And then your final conclusion, the wording for your final conclusion, make sure that you reference this, uh, this slide in the PowerPoint. This is gonna tell you exactly how to word your final conclusion.